So that's another little short video. Um, this is a uh, 5 volt 10 megahertz OCXO which I purchased. This was on a little circuit board. Um, I showed it in mailbag which I don't remember if, if I published it yet or not. I might have done. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to test this. I've got the printout marked on it. I found the uh, data sheet for it online and I've marked the pinouts what they do. And um, oh, at least what, what I need to worry about. So I'm going to hook up to this. I've already got the scope on to warm it up. And I'm going to. That's RF output there. And we'll test it out and we'll see what comes out. Um, zero volts here. We'll clip this on too. I've got my power supply running because it's 5 volts, obviously, as I said. And then we need. DC on this one here. Alright, so see so what happens. There you go, we have something happening. I am not coupled very well, I think. Triggering reliably. I must have something set a bit funny. Yeah, maybe it's that. Why is this being a bit weird? Here we go. Let's do that instead. Right. Obviously my settings are a bit funny on it right now. Okay, so there we go, we are uh, we've triggered on that. Um, and that shows what it's doing. So up here we see 10 megahertz, I hope you can see it, I may not be able to, it's pretty small. So 10.00012, but that's because the scope is slightly out by that much. So it's doing 10 megahertz. I can verify it's accurate by plugging into my frequency counter, which I've only just turned on. So it's going to be a little bit cold. Um, I'll do that. But it's at least generating an output, and that's the main thing. That's the main thing I'm actually looking for here. Let's hook up to this. Yeah, I've already seen 10 megahertz, even though I've got the earth on there. I'm seeing 10 megahertz on my counter just fine, so that's looking absolutely fine. So it appears to be dead accurate. Um, you know, being an OCXO, it's got a bit of warm up time required and things like that as well. But um, yeah, this is you know very good. It looks bang on basically. I mean, my um, counter's still warming up, so that's a little bit of. So I've got a slight error there, but I mean, it's probably going to come right when my counter warms up. Um, we're talking sad boy. Uh, Ten hertz at the moment. I would say it's this is warming up. Yeah, it's getting a little warm in there, slightly warm, and the. Uh, Fugues account is warming up, so it's 10 hertz off right now, but that will probably come right, I expect, when it all settles down and warms up, probably. This isn't currently triggering again, is it? Oh, this is. It is triggering. That's okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's what we're getting. Um, yeah, I, I think that's fine. So what I'm looking at doing now is I'm, I want to pull my record Dana counter down which I've got sitting on a shelf um, I've actually got that for sale so I was actually tempted to put this in and sell it with it but I think well I might just do the make a conversion board up and actually have a conversion and um, take it back out again and keep that board 
So, because I'd actually like to get a uh, 1992 counter. So I do come across on one day, at least I've got a board then I can put in. Because I believe they take the same oscillator board. Um, so, if all else fails, I can sell it as a you know modification. But, but say, say, 5 volt reference, so it's, um, you know, it's got other functions. I mean, current wise is using half an amp. Oh, sorry, it's not even doing that, is it? Sorry, that's my lights. The, um, yeah, I don't know what to do actually. Offhand. It won't be much. Um, let's get my other power supply section running. Set it on 5 volts. Change it over. Okay. Yeah, it's running half an amp. Okay. It's half an amp it's running in. Um, it's just dropped down a little bit. It's obviously with the ovens turning off. It's dropping down. It's now about 50 milliamps, 53 milliamps. And it's coming back up again. So it's obviously, you know, as the oven stabilizing and, and what have you, it's, it's uh, varying that current. And it's only 8 hertz out now, so it's getting closer between my counter and, and this. So which one is out? Probably a bit of both. Uh, my counter is not currently locked to rubidium. It's one of the projects I've got to do, which I'll be doing shortly, is a, um, oh, as time allows, uh, I put in my rubidium into a little box and um, and using that to run my test gear properly. Um, uh, just as an optional thing. Yeah. Okay, so that's enough of that. I'm starting to waffle again. So it works, and that's the main thing there. And uh, I'll, I'll start doing modification board, I think. All right, so I've got the uh, 991 here. This is a this unit is one which featured in one of my previous videos. Where I replaced all these buttons. All well, the actual press buttons were faulty, so I've replaced every single one of them. So that's you know been featured before. Now this this is one I'll show. I'll show where this board was not actually plugged in properly. And which is why it didn't work. <laughs> so it was a really easy repair. Anyway, um, so this is the original board, 10 megahertz, obviously, with a little trimmer on there. I think it's just a TCXO, but probably not even a very good one. It doesn't seem to be particularly stable. It takes a long time to warm up and things like that. Um, what I am looking for here, actually, is to see if this pinout matches. Because that would be pretty good, wouldn't it, if it did? It may match in some ways. I need to check it, but I suspect no, it's different. It's different. It doesn't match. It's just it would be really convenient if it just went straight on, wouldn't it? But it's not quite the same natural vertical pin out that way. It's not right. But um. That's okay, so I want to make another little board for this anyway and put this onto a little bit of perf board. And this is just like you could use a header pin for this. Um, what I need to verify is the actual pin out here is um, the voltages. You know, it's got a 5 volt supply in there somewhere and um, and what have you. So I need to just put that back in, power it up, and um, verify which pins which again because I don't remember what they are. Um, because I don't want to get it wired up backwards or something like that. That wouldn't be very good. So let's plug this back in and I'll check the pinouts. Hopefully. Right. Let's double check that's actually in the right place. Yeah, it looks alright. Yep. Yeah. Right, power wire. Which I think I'll nick from here for now. Uh, Right, that should power up when I hit that button. There we go. Right, it's powering up. I suppose I could use my scope for that actually. I've got to set to DC, so that should actually work. I should have to use my scope. Let's do that, it'd be easier. Alright. Right, so, it's the first pin. I don't know. 
that looks like 18 volts <laughs> okay pro voltage is wrong uh, 10 times pro there we go let's try it again so it might be 5 volts Three point seven. Hmm. Okay. What's it on there? Nothing. There's the output. Three point seven volts seems a bit strange. Should be five volts. There we go. That's five volts here. Why was getting three point seven? Maybe it's because the trigger wasn't right. So because I did manual trigger. Right, there we go, that's fine. So 5.15 volts. So the voltage is pin 1. Let's make a note of this before I forget if I can find my note paper. And if I can find a pin. Right. So pin 1 is 5 volt. Pin 2 is nothing. Uh, pin 3 is ground I think appears to be pin 4 is the signal and pin 5 is nothing alright so 3 is 0 volts um, 4 is 10 meg and 5 is no function ok I'm not quite sure why I got a 5 pin header if I actually use 3 of the pins I do find that a little bit strange um, let's put this off again. Let's verify the bottom here. Okay, so the header is here. I think that's it. Yep. So pin one's five volts. Pin two is missing. There is no pin two. Three, four, five. So four and five do go to things. So five has got no connection as far as I can tell, but it does come along here. Um, and then it then goes to this chip. Just here. So that's interesting. Very interesting. One if I need to go to pin five. Maybe that's for a different frequency or something. So Yeah, maybe that's for a different oscillator option. Maybe it's for you know five megahertz or one megahertz oscillator or something instead. Um, very interesting. You know, anyway, this board's putting out ten megahertz. So basically I just want to replicate this board but with this unit here. So um, that's fine. I have some perf board here somewhere. Just dig it out. All these other projects I've got going on. Right, get the perf board. Hopefully the pinout will match the perf board. It should, I expect. Yeah, they will kind of line up. Not perfectly though. That middle pin there is in the middle. It doesn't actually line up that way, I think. Yeah, the middle pin doesn't line up. So I might have to do something about that. Um, if I hang it off the edge, then it won't matter. That's a bit bodge, isn't it? No, I'll do that. I'll put it to make another hole. Those two pins aren't being used anyway. Um, one of those was a uh, voltage compensation um, I don't know which one it was but one one was for to allow trimming so you can actually trim it with the voltage if it's um, used um, it's not necessarily used so um, I just might just go for the, the basic three connections but I'm going to have to do something about this connection here a bit irritating the other pins line up so it's that central one so what I need to do so let's make a, this board 
So it's got to fit into this space. Will it fit behind the back there? No, it's got to go in the front. So I've got to put it mirrored as well. So this has to be the top. So it's got to be on the top of the ball because it will fit that way. And maybe off to one side. So I might need to use a larger section of the board rather than this piece. Um, yeah. So basically it's got to be the size of this board at least. That's you know that's already pretty close. I mean that's not a bad size. It's almost, almost, almost perfect actually. I might just use that board. And then um, offset it on there. I mean it's fine. It's not there's nothing really in the way. It's got to make sure it's on the back of the board, not on the well on the front of the board, not on the back of the board, otherwise it just won't fit. So I'll do this, I'm gonna stop here and I'll cut this board out and uh, mount this thing up. Alright, so I've cut the board out. Now I've got some header here, which should be able to replicate oh, the function of this. Alright, so this is an old used one, I've pulled it off something else I've prototyped and dismantled it later on, so this is pretty crappy, but it will be okay. It will do the job. Let's try and get this trimmed down a little bit. Get, yeah, get rid of the overhang. Alright. So it needs to have five pins, which is fine. Um, now remember, I need to put this on the back, all right? So this has got to be on one side, and this has to be um, like that, basically. So this track side is the same as this top side here, all right? Um, uh, and I have spotted an error already. I have. So I've got a strip down the side here. That's in the wrong place. Mind you, it might not matter actually. I'm going to be gluing it to the side anyway. I'm not going to be putting the pins through. Probably be alright. I have to do jumpers anyway. So yeah, it's probably okay. Not, it's not a big a deal. I should have put the board up this way up. I've already done the hole there for the mounting, so it's yeah, it's. Mm, I don't know. Could do that better way, but no, no, I'll, just, I'll stay this way now. I'm committed. Right, so I need five pins, apparently. So I'm going to have a sacrificial pin just there, which is a bit of a shame, but it's the nature of it. Okay. So that's all fine, let's cut across there. Now what I've got to do basically is just mount this on here. Now some of those pins I can probably put through and bend. Uh, but it needs to be the same height as on this board. So they match. Okay, which makes it a little trickier, but it's not that bad. Um, it's a little bit fiddly. So I just need that height there. Centre on those pins and that's fine. If I put on those pins there, it might be a bit low. Um, that, that pin row there, okay, right. So I'm just going to put a little scratch on here to show you where I need to put it into. Put it right in there. Oh, scratch, pinned, pin mark. Right. So if I can bend it in, and that will fit there just fine. Alright, so let's do that now. One pin is going to have to bend backwards because of the lack of hole, but that's okay. So I'm going to get them in there a little bit, and then just try and do it. With a pair of tweezers instead, shall we? Because it needs, needs to be bent over like this. Okay. This might be a better way of doing it. Right. So those should then go into there, like so. So that then replicates the original in that way. And I'll just have to bend that pin there down a little bit so it touches that trace there. And I can use it as a 5 up rail. And that's fine. I've also probably cut put a cross across a uh, cut across here to completely insulate all of these other traces from the mounting. But I'll do that once I've figured out exactly where I'm going to put things. Um, in case I put a cut in the wrong place. So that's okay. I might just actually just try and bend that a little bit down. Like so. Yeah. So I can probably solder that in place now. 
I'm, co I'm comfortable with that. That's good. Um, yeah, I'm comfortable. That's all right. That worked. So I want when solder in place, I can actually plug it in and test it. Okay, so let's do that. Oh, I should have given this border clean first. Hold on, I haven't done it yet. Uh, here it is. Flux pin. Yeah, let's do the whole wall. There they are. Probably needs it. Not quite sure we can put the jumpers and stuff yet, so. Okay. Plenty of flux on there. <laughs> Alright, do us again. Okay. It's the right place again. You know it'd help if I turn the iron on. <laughs> oh yeah. Right, so while I'm waiting for that to warm up, so this needs to go on the other side, and so pin one is this end, which has got no that lack of track there, right? So um, I'll probably like run a little link through or over to where this is going to be. So pin one is positive there. So if I run leave the positive at the top. I'm going to link it across somewhere, maybe. Negative that way. Negative is pin three. Let's try and decide the best way of orientating this thing. And four is ten megahertz output, which is that one there. So if I offset that to pin four like that, then one pin will be correct, <laughs> and the rest I'll just have to stick jumpers on, which is fine. I mean that's I'm happy with that. I think is it? So RF out is yes four, isn't it? Yep. And then positive there, which I'm going to stick a link across to there. Um, negative down there, which I'm going to stick a link across. I'll probably just Joe jump across the back of the board actually from there to there, and that'd be alright. So that works out okay. So I'm going to do now is mark this well. I've got to put this hole for this other pin, which is mag bang in the middle, which is a bit of a strange place for it, but right there. Can make a hole in the board just for that, and that should be okay. I don't think that's going to interfere with anything. No, it looks fine, that'll go in there just fine. No shoot, so um, I'll make a hole there. Let's go and do that. I mean, I should be using a drill, but you know, a screwdriver is good enough most times. A little bit of a bodge, but you know, it'll work, it's fine. It's got to make enough of a hole so the pin can go through it, that's all, and uh, make sure it's all good. Let's go off to one side. And just make sure I get the orientation back in the right place again, okay. Anyway. Right. Really should drill this, but you know, I'm, the drills are in a garage. <laughs> anyway, right. and these traces aren't being used anyway, so I'm not too worried about those. Okay, it's a bit of a bodge, but yeah, I really can't bother. <laughs> right, it goes. Uh, there yeah, somewhere, get the height right. It's very far, that's definitely right. Okay, that's the filter on there, or the actual oscillator on the board. So I can solder that in place now. Now my iron's on. Then I shall modify the trace layer as required. I also have to cut some traces and that sort of thing, but that's fine. Okay. 
And this is in a way this is like a temporary modification. I just want to do it, do a video on it, and take it back out because I don't really want to sell it with it. I'm not going to get any more for it with the with the uh, OCXO in there. I think. Um, no one's actually asked if it's got an OCXO in it, so I just won't have it. That's fine. Just going to try and bring these bits of solder up his tracks quite a way to make it nice and strong. Okay. Right, that's that soldered on. And uh, now I just need to cut these traces here, obviously, because they're not going to be used. Um, actually, first I'll put the links and figure out where I'm going to put those links. Let's get a bit of jumper wire. Hopefully, I've got something long enough. Old component leg. So, we want the zero volt, which is right on that pin there, to the center pin. So, there to there. That is not long enough. Hopefully I have something here which is long enough. Hmm. I'd rather use one solid jumper. Oh, must knock the camera over. No, here's one. This one's shit. That's long enough. That's a big capacitor one. Okay, it's nice and junky though. That's good. So we'll chuck that one. Um, I've got the bloody solder over the hole. That's typical, wasn't it? That's right, isn't it? Three pin, yep. Let's just do this. Over. Okay. It's a nice chunky earth, which is good. You must gotta take half an amp, so yeah, that's fine. I'll probably uh, need to beef up the actual trace as well, so I'll just put some solder across that trace to make sure it's all nicely beefed up too. A bit more current handling capacity and solder this component leg in here. It should be good. Right. Now what I also need to do is get the 5 volt, which is over here, the opposite corner, just there, so that's fine. So I'm just going to run a bit of solder down here to increase the current capacity. Now it's not a huge improvement but it's a little bit. Into there. Okay what I need to do is basically put a jumper from here to that pin. So let's get another piece of wire. And I think I will Jump it from the back of the board and bring it around to the front. Just be careful not getting too close to that hole there. I think I'm getting too close to it there. Um, maybe I won't do it that way. Maybe I'll just do it. Not actually through the hole, but just in location. Because I mustn't have it coming through the back, otherwise it would end up touching the casing. I have to be a little bit careful how I do that. Um, that would be alright like that. So I'll just solder that across there, or at least into that point there. And I'll bend it some more and get it off the board a little bit. Okay, so I don't want it dead on the board, I just want it lifted off slightly. So make sure it definitely doesn't shorten any other tracks. And then I'll can trim this down a bit and make it fit.
Okay, so it stood off quite nicely. Okay, that's all good. Right. If I was really worried about it, I would have just done like a wire straight from one to the other. Um, I don't really think that's necessary though. Trim these bits off. Okay. Um, so the RF out was directly. I think I might just do a bit of a solder bridge across here as well, just to make sure it's all good. It shouldn't really matter in this case, but um, it's just a protects the copper trace as well. Right, so so that pin there is not used, that pin there is not used. So what I'm going to do now is cut these traces here. Let's do them halfway up. Should be sufficient. Just make sure they isolate from each other. You can't get pop at all for doing this, but I don't have it. <laughs> I've always used a knife like this. It's always worked fine. I've only stabbed myself a couple of times. Uh, right. Same here. That's very important since that's the uh, plus and minus on the same rail, effectively. So I need to make sure they're definitely isolated well. Okay. Actually, that's the output. Sorry, that's the output there. But uh, right, that's looking okay. Let's clean the flux up, and then we'll plug it in and test it. and uh, see if I blow it up or not. See if I got it completely wrong. I really hope not. <laughs> but it happens. Okay. A little toothbrush is always a good little thing to have for doing the kind of work because you get the flux can get quite hard and um, it just helps to get it off a bit easier. You know, it's sort of a bit of a, a soft abrasion, you know, and it's it's quite good for that. Okay, it's looking pretty good now. All right, let's just double check the pin out just to make sure I haven't stuffed something up completely. So, one five volt. Correct. No bridge across that trace. No bridge across any of those terminals on that socket. All looks good. Uh, two, not used. And no connections anywhere. Three, zero volts, which I've got the jumper going to across to here, which is the zero volt. Um, comes up to that pin. Connection's broken there. There's no jumpers or anything there. That's all right. Um, four is the 10 megahertz output, so RF output pin there goes to pin four, correct. No other connections, pin five unused, although as I say, it has got a connection inside the unit. So let's plug it in and move this bits of metal and stuff out of the way because I'm going to short it out and I'll move things around. It's never a good thing. Plug this in and we shall try it. Make sure we get the right connections on there. Okay. Right, that's plugged in. The board lines up with the hole, that's always a bonus. I haven't put a screw in yet. Um, I haven't isolated the hole yet. I'm going to do that anyway. Even though I don't think it's an issue, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, let's just run a cut across here to allow for any wobbling. Okay, in case you're wobbling thing back and forth and try and get it out or something like that, just make sure there's a nice clean cut between all those connections because you really don't want to short me out. No, someone's trying to work on it or something. Right, that's all good there. 
Right, that's it done. Just a good precaution. Alright, so I'll plug this back in again. That. Double check it. Looks right. Okay, let's plug power in and try it out. We're well, booted, which means it's got an oscillation. Because if it's an oscillation, not working, it doesn't boot. So. Um, well, at least it boots really, really slowly. So that looks good. Um, check. Check. I think I showed the frequency. There we go. So, there you go. It's oscillating. It just shows you what I think so the frequency is, which is fine. Now, I want to get an external frequency in. And we shall. See how accurate it ends up being. My obviously my generator's only just turned on, so it's not going to be accurate completely. Not until it warms up a bit. Let's get a uh, BNC cable for this. Find one. There we go. I've ordered some more cables actually, because I seem to always have trouble finding one. Input A. Right. We have a frequency. As you can see, it's rapidly coming down as it's all warming up. Obviously, my Marconi is uh, warming up as well. So, um, it's a combination of this unit warming up and the Marconi as well coming to temperature. So, it should stabilize. Okay, so I'm going to pause this for a minute and before, instead of waiting for it. Okay, so I've got this running on my Rubidium standard. I've given it some warm-up time, it's only, I don't know, about 10 minutes or so, and um, it's off slightly, right? If I do a longer gate time, obviously the one's off the side now. That's what OEF means, overflow. So it's about 6.7 hertz. Alright, so that's 100 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz, hertz, oh sorry, 0 0.6 hertz, right? Because that's kilohertz, that's hertz, so 0.6 hertz. 0.67 hertz off. So it's not too bad, is it? Listen, hurt. Um, but it's still not dead accurate. So I might have to look at the peanut sticker back a little bit and maybe give it a bit of a tweak. Um, it's still way better than it was before on the original one. Um, I can actually show you that if I turn it back off again. Okay, if I plug the original one back in again, I'll show you that. Exactly the same reading. Before I do that, I'll plug in the Marconi again to show you that. So this is what the Marconi is doing. So Marconi is slightly off frequency here. Um, so kilohertz, that's two and a half hertz off on a Marconi. So I might need to look at the calibration there. But again, if I get my Rubidium standard running um, properly in a proper box and stuff and just hook it to my gear per permanently and instead of done it, then I don't have to worry about that anyway. But um, yeah, so the Marconi is, you know, it's close. It's out by a little bit, but you know, it's slightly off. Again, that's a 10 megahertz. Go down. All right. So, yeah, it's not too bad. You know, it's a bit further out than I'd like it to be. So, let's pull this card out and put the other one in. Oh, don't drop it again. Put the other card back in, the original one. That's in, yep, that's in there. Right, let's see what this thinks of it. So, yeah, that's the difference between the original and the one I've just made. Right, it's you know a fairly significant difference, I think. Yeah, I'll spring up a bit, it's just a bit funny, doesn't it? Yeah, um, as you can see, it drifts around a bit when it's starting up and. I mean, I think it's a TCXO, but look of it, but it doesn't say it's TCXO. It might just be an oscillator, and it's not that stable. Um, it takes a long time to settle down at all. You know, this this um, this one here was was pretty quick. You know, within a minute, it's pretty much there, right? Um, 
I mean, you can see this one's drifting. I mean, you expect a bit of warm up time and stuff like that, but it's, um, you know, I'll come back to this in a couple of minutes. I'll do that and show you what it's like in a couple of minutes' time. So it's about three minutes later now, and it's still, you know, creeping up slowly. Uh, you know, that's the nature of that existing one. So this uh, module here, now, I believe it's got an adjustment underneath that sticker there, but this pin two, I believe, is. Um, allows for calibration so you can actually tune it as well so I might just try hooking up some resistors on here and just see if I can actually tune that value um, externally I might just try that first so it's been about eight minutes and it's still not up there yet it's still 100 Hertz off so it takes ages for this to come right it takes hours so um, that's why I didn't want to use that one anymore all right so I tried putting some resistors on the back of that board across that pin 2 and it's made no difference so I tried 4 volts and I also tried about two and a half volts and it hasn't made any difference whatsoever to, to the voltage uh, to the frequency reading so it looks like in this case this particular unit pin 2 isn't used it's an optional one it's not always enabled um, in this case it looks like it's not being used on this unit so which is a bit of a shame so I'm going to have to try and pull that sticker off I think and try and calibrate it and see what happens there okay so let's pull the sticker back and just under there the tiny little trimmer is inside there, I don't think you can see it. Let's just have a look. It's just in there. Little trimmer. Okay, so I need to try and get this in place and adjust that in place against the rubidium standard. Um, I mean, who knows how old this thing is? Well, actually, it's probably got a date on it. Date 0437. It's probably 37th week of 2004. So that's 13 years old, so it doesn't surprise me if it's drifted off calibration slightly. So I'll put it back in and um, I'll give it a tune up. We'll come back shortly. Okay, so I've uh, played around, it's got a screwdriver which fits, and um, now I'm going to calibrate this. So, was, so I've got my rubidium sitting right here. Um, here's my little collection of ceramic screwdrivers. Um, it has to be always like to use insulated tools, non-metallic, on this kind of thing. So it's, a, it's I've got a selection of different uh, tips, and this one's quite narrow. And this one, which actually fits inside the adjustment, here, I've already got it to go in there. So now I see the tune this for 10 megahertz exactly. Um, if I increase the resolution slightly here, and that's as high as it will go, I think. Yep. So I need to get this to say zero zero, and I'll be happy with that. So let's try and get this thing in. Find the adjustment. There's a little slot in there somewhere. Now I've lost the slot. There it is. Right. Now this turns really easily. So that's what, what adjustment range have we got? So I'm going to go to 283 below. Well, 9.99992 all the way up to. 10.663 so it's pretty well centered actually it's not bad um, okay so let's try and get this at 10 megahertz might be a bit touchy very sensitive not too far oh really close here we go there we go. Perfect. Just give it a minute to settle down. Stick the sticker back over. Try and keep the heat inside the unit. So yeah, that's looking good. So what we had to, that's kilohertz, that's hertz, so that is tenths, uh, so. will be microhertz, yeah 10 microhertz, yeah, oh, I don't know. yeah, microhertz that would be, so kilohertz, hertz, yeah, that would be 10 microhertz, give or take a little bit, which is pretty damn good I reckon so yeah 
I don't know why it's rounding down a little bit because of the gate timing. Anyway, so that's that modification. So that's how easy it is, you know. Um, as long as you got things like, you know, a rubidium standard. Um, you know, this is nice and warm. It's a good, it's a good thing for the winter. You know, keep it nice and warm. Keep your hands on that. Um, rubidium standard. So you know, you got a good frequency source to compare against. Obviously, there are better things than this, um, but for what for my purposes, this is certainly accurate enough. Um, yeah, I'm certainly well happy with the accuracy of, of this for what I do. I don't need to be super accurate, you know. To me, one hurt accuracy is good enough for what I do. Um, for most things, anyway, I don't really see anything other than that. So, um, so that's yeah, that's really good. You know, I'm tempted to get a slight tweak more towards the 10 megahertz side. Stop that downwards rounding. It's gonna be hard to get it right again, though. It's gonna be pretty hard to beat that. Uh, that whole aim for perfection thing. Oh, I think it's good enough. I'll leave where it is. I, I, I don't want to push my luck. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So that's it, as easy as that. Now, that's. Uh, top it back. I did actually um, put the screw in this, so I was tempted to, to put this in and sell it with the OCXO in there, but um, I'm not going to. I'm going to keep the OCXO. Uh, I'm not going to get any money, extra money from selling it with the OCXO. Um, I'll probably do better to sell it as an add-on or keep it myself for when I maybe get another one later on. So. For now, I'm just going to leave it as it is with the original unit in there, which doesn't stabilize in a, in a very quick time at all. It's very slow to stabilize, it's never a fun thing. So, let's just get that in and do it without dropping it. Good, there okay. So back to that. So it does actually get on frequency eventually, but it takes ages to get there. It's very slow. Um, but you obviously you have to tune it for where the thing stabilizes to, not for where you know it is in you know five to five minutes. Let's just try and accelerate this process slightly. Also, it doesn't help that it's a bit cold in here, so um, you know the temperatures aren't actually like 20 degrees or whatever. It's actually colder than that. So, what is it right now? It's, it's 20 degrees in there actually. That's warmed up a little bit. Um, you yeah, see, so that's actually warm now. We've gone too far the other way, but it'll cool down again pretty quick. So, yeah. But that shows our temperature sensitive. So that's probably only about. 40, 40 degrees. It's not that hot, right? Um, and it swung, you know, 300. There you go, blowing on it to water down by 10. <laughs> it's like that. Like you can see how unstable it is. Yeah. Yeah, I want that board up too much. I accelerated it too quickly. Anyway, I mean, once it is warmed up, it does stabilise quite well. I mean, see that that ball temperature is changing; it's cooling down, but it's still sitting around that te that frequency there, All right? So um, it does like to be warmer, but you know, it's not a huge amount I can do about that. Really, it's just that's the way that particularly frequency reference works. Um, I, I actually do have a 
10 megahertz OCXO, uh, TCXO. Uh, I bought a couple of those. That a new TCXO might be better than the original one in that regard. Um, you know, just like I built this one, I could maybe consider doing a uh, an OCX, uh, TCXO version. Oh, I need to stick this back down again. But, uh, yeah, so that's that built. I mean, you can see now, you can see how easy it is. You can get, God, I keep dropping it, it's not good for it. So, you can get you know, those little OCXO modules, 5 volt module, and just wire it up just like so, and easy as that. So, but I say I'm, I'm going to keep hold of this, I'm not going to sell that one, I'm going to keep that. That's a uh, few, bit of future proofing there, because I'm actually on the lookout for a 992. Um, It'd be nice to get a 992, uh, 992, 1992, because um, they've got the 3 GHz, let's get 3 GHz, anyway, the third channel anyway, in the centre, the channel C, which gives you that higher frequency input range, which I would like to have, um, I mean, this isn't actually as sensitive as my, uh, as my Philips or as my HP, they both have better sensitivity than this. Um, but the HP is a bit less stable, I think. The HP, it does, it's really hard to get the calibration right on that one. Um, whereas the Philips is pretty much, you set it and it stays pretty solid. It doesn't really change much at all. It's, um, it's much more stable. As I think this one will be with this unit in it. So I'm hoping I'll get a 1992 and um, install that if it doesn't already have one. Um, but... I mean, I'm just waiting for one to come up at the right price. I, if, I'm hoping I'll find one which is the same as this head, with all the buttons don't work. Um, you know, but all the buttons are broken, and then it's replaced all the buttons because I've got a whole stack more of them. And um, I'm hoping to get one of those in, at the right price, but I don't want to spend a lot of money on it because I don't really need another frequency counter. <laughs> I've, I've I've got about four, I think. Um, so I'm, I want to sell this one. I'll purchase this one to do a video on it and sell it. That was the reason for getting it in the first place. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm just just how that stabilising is going now. Probably because I haven't got the covers on. It's probably not helping either. It's, it's a bit colder. A bit of a breeze going across it. That kind of thing. But um, yeah, you can see how much it's shifting around by. The ball doesn't feel warm anymore now. So, yeah, I should put the covers on that and see how it stabilises. We'll come back shortly. Alright, so this is with the original TCXO or oscillator, whatever the hell it is that's in there. And um, it's now been about half an hour and it's finally come up to this kind of reading, but it's still not stable, it's still climbing. Um, it's just gradually drifting. I see, I've got the cases back on it now, so that's, you know, keeping it a bit warmer. But, um,. And helping the stability, I think, but the uh, the unit is, isn't stable with the original unit that's in there. Um, no, it, it does settle eventually, but it takes ages. So, uh, an OCXR on these things is a really good upgrade, I think. So, that's enough of that. Uh, catch you later, have a good one, tell me what you think, and subscribe and for share the video and that sort of stuff. And look how easy it is to make one of these things, not hard at all. Catch you later.